do you, uh, do people look to you if they're not experienced in this sort of way and say, what would you do if this were your house? As far as, do you want to tunnel through the garage? Do you want to tunnel through a closet? Do you want to tunnel underneath the house from the side of the house? Are you able to give recommendations? Here's the good side, here's the bad side. They do. I, I get these calls often. I get calls from friends that maybe aren't even using me. They're like, Roger, look, I'm sorry. Uh, you know, we live further out than you go. So we called somebody else. They're telling me I have this problem and they're giving me this price and they want to do it this way. What do you think? And I always ask them, look, did they give you options? And is there another way you can go with it? It's always good to know that you have choices. Now, we've been talking about slab leaks in particular. What's the first thing people should do besides just turn off all your water at the, at the street or wherever if you detect a slab, well, if you think you might have a slab leak or one of those neighbors says, oh, yeah, looks like you got a slab leak there. You might as well just pack up and move. I've got, I've got a lady in Plano right now that her slab leak is so bad it's flooding her neighbor's front yard. And her house is about three feet higher. And literally, you can look over in their front yard and it, and it looks like a river. We... Did talk to her. Uh, she is turning off the water, or only turning it on as she needs it. We went out and did a leak location and determined it was on the hot water side. So she had a ball valve on her hot water heater, so she is actually able to turn it off when she's not using it. She'll literally turn it on to take a shower. That lets the ground dry up a little bit, and it's given her a little bit of a time, a little bit of time to figure out exactly what she wants to do and how she wants to go about the repair, which way. I think if I were that neighbor with the lake in my yard, I'd say, Des, guess what? Shower in my house. You know, yeah, I'll leave, 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 it, leave it off. Exactly. Yeah. Don't, keep, don't keep doing this. How, how much time do you have before you better get this taken care of or you're going to cause permanent damage? Anytime there's a leak under a slab, it's slowly causing damage. A lot of foundation problems, and, that, and that's a big deal with insurance company is, are, did the water leak cause the foundation? Did the foundation cause the water leak? what came first, the chicken or the egg. There's not really a way to know. And they say, oh, well, we've got engineers that can test it and, and determine that. I'm just calling BS. It's how, how can you tell me that the foundation shifted and caused the water leak or the water leak caused the earth to rot away and help the foundation shift? It's, it's just their way to try to get out of it, I guess. Right. And, and that's what they're in business, trying to keep their costs low. And, uh, but uh, what I was always told is it's a, it just happened. It was sudden. It has not been an ongoing leak for months. It didn't happen last year, and I ignored it and didn't walk to that side of the house. Uh, how bad, how tough is it to actually find the spot? Because, again, to refer back to what I went through, they said they thought it was here. They gave us the choice. Do you want us to go through the garage floor or tunnel 20? They knew it was going to be at least 20 feet to go under the house, which was very expensive, and it was going to be on our wallet. Uh, but then when they tunneled down through the garage, which we chose, then they said, well, it wasn't in the spot that we thought, so it's going to cost you more money to go to the left a few feet over that way, and it did. So how tough is it to actually locate it when you can't see it? Was your test on your, or was your leak on your water line or your sewer line? I believe that was the water line. Okay. Yeah, that was the water line. It was to, small little pipe. To, to locate the leak on a water line, what we do is we've got, the, we've got the greatest electronic equipment. A lot of companies still use geophones, which there's nothing wrong with them. They are basically a great stethoscope. You've got two metal geophones. They're made of brass. You put them out. You've got literally hoses that come up into your ears, and you listen under the slab. The electronic equipment that we have We've got Leaktronics equipment from California, which is fantastic. I've got an LS leak detection system I, or from subsurface leak detection. I've got an LS-15. They're both great equipment. I mean, we've probably got $20,000, $30,000 worth of listening equipment just for this. So to locate it, what you do is, first of all, you go in, you, you shut the valve off in the yard to make sure the leak's not in the yard, that it is under the Isolated. house. Isolate it. Isolate it. Then you come into the water heater, if there's a working ball valve, turn it off. Now you check again, is the leak on the hot side or the cold side? Once you know where the, where the leak is or what system it's on, then you literally go through and you start locating. And what we do is we run an electronic signal through that system, and we've got another tool that goes through to where we can literally mark exactly where the water lines are under your house. 
Then at that point, we pull out our listening equipment, we induce air into the system, and now we're going through and we're listening for bubbles and boiling. It's a certain signature noise that it makes. Mm -hmm. Before that, you can also go through and listen to all the angle stops. Uh, listen to all the shower valves. Listen everywhere. Water has a very unique noise. And once you learn how to hear that noise and, and how to find it, it can be found. One of the, the best leak detection jobs I ever did here in Dallas was in South Dallas at a trailer park home. I went out, or trailer home park, I went out and they told me, they said, we're losing 2 million gallons of water a month. And they said, we've had seven or eight plumbing companies come out. Nobody can find it. And for, my first thought was two million gallons a month. You've had the wrong people out here. I went out there, and believe it or not, with my equipment, within the first hour, I had located it. Didn't even know that was the big one. But I located a leak, and I'm like, look, number one, right here, this is the signature noise we're looking for. I went out there for the next four nights because I like to be on a property like that when nobody's around. There's not as much water usage, people taking showers, washing clothes. So literally, we'd go out at 10 o'clock at night and stay out there till 6 in the morning. Go out there and listen to every meter. If we hear something at the meter, go up to the house and listen at the house. And we were able to find three leaks on that job. Just so happened, that first one that I found where is where the water line came off the main, went over to dual meters, it was a one inch line, and there was a hole in that one inch water line about as big as the fingernail on my little finger. Two million gallons a month. They never had surface water up here. The water was apparently going down into the bedrock and going off to a stream or creek or somewhere.